Welcome to Ubuntu Essence. I am because you are. The essence of being human. In service to rekindle the flame of humanity. Hello my loves, welcome to another episode of Storytelling Medicine on Ubuntu Essence Podcast. I am your host, Sasha Marie Allen. And it's such a joy and pleasure to introduce you to the guest of this week. Her name is Leah and she's just this embodiment of her work, her purpose, her mission in bringing this deity divine energy into our bodies throughout the wisdom of Egyptian, which is actually African culture and wisdom, and just bringing all of that back. We discuss so much from the art of black culture and the divine and how we can embody this and how the divine helps us live a more empowered life. Wow, there's just so much juiciness in this that I can't wait for you to dive in. So enjoy. Hi, Leah. Hi. (laughs) Welcome. Thank you. Um, Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. And I feel you have a lot of wisdom and magic to bring, uh, especially with the work that you do and the culture and yeah i'm i'm dying (laughs) to dive into this juiciness yes do it (laughs) so uh, tell us just a little bit about your background um yeah where do you come from Mm -hmm. how was your upbringing uh yeah just a little bit about you before we start okay um so i'm leah maat mcfly and um, I've been, I'm known as a dancer, so I've been dancing since the age of three, teaching since the age of 14. So I've been teaching uh, hip hop styles, dan- like whacking, popping, Afrobeat, dance hall. And um, toured with my brother for a bit. Um, I work with a lot of dance groups, I choreograph festivals, mm-hmm. and so I'm a you know, pretty much a creative. I also do hair and styling Mm -hmm. um, for music videos, um, magazines, stuff like that. And I also create events. So I do, I'm known for doing a party called Chocolate Jungle. It's like a 90s party, um, Soul Train vibe. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also curate a lot of artistic events, um, like exhibitions, um, anything celebrating art, uh, woman, culture. Mm -hmm. And I work a lot with kids too, so Amazing. have a lot of like. <laughs> Ooh, I love your oozing yeah, different creativity. Avenues. Art is medicine, right? Yes. So what does mm. what does this art represent for you? The art represents freedom, um, authenticity, rawness, um, and being true to 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 yourself. Um, and also being vulnerable to your art, where you're okay to not always know it all, but to keep learning. Um, I'm from Montreal. Uh, my parents, my mom's from Barbados. My dad's from Belize. Uh, so yeah, like, um, yeah, I feel like growing up, my dad was very much an artist. My mom, not so much, but I feel like with them allowing me to express my art, I've been able to see that, yeah, like, this, um, wait, what was the last thing you just said? Um, I'm getting a blank now. You'd ask me how is it... Uh, what does the art represent for you? Yeah, so yeah, like, it just represents, like, a journey of, like, learning, mm-hmm. you know, and expression, mm-hmm. being free, and being colorful for me because I like color therapy. I use it to cheer me up. If I'm sad, I don't wear black. If it rains, I don't Mm. wear black. I wear rainbow, Mm. you know? Mm. So I feel like um, expression with with art is really important. Mm. And 
even if it's sad or if it's angry, mm. but just being truthful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And it really brings back to what we were talking before we started this conversation. I feel the importance of like black art, of the movement of black artists. I feel like the world mm. would not be the same without black culture and how that really heals humanity, right? And how mm -hmm. can we raise and, and uplift um, this even more, right? Because I yeah. feel it has, it's just a different type of juiciness. It has a different type of depth, I yeah. feel. Yeah, it's, it's like, because the thing is, is the culture, the beauty in the, uh, in the music, in the black music comes from struggle and Alvin having to make the best out of a situation. And so it's very empowering when you're going through your life every day because example like was in like Brazil, like Capoeira was, was something that was hidden, you know, for slavery for them to, it was the dance was for them to, to actually talk and explain or to have a plan, you know? So it's like, these are ways where they had to express without, you know, they weren't allowed to talk to each other when they were working, you know? And, but then there's beautiful things where it's like actual tribes in Africa that have different traditions, you know? Um, whether it's rings on their neck, whether it's, you know, jumping high, like the Maasai. So I think it's, it's, it's also discouraging, I know sometimes for some people, because African or like deep rooted culture sometimes is very difficult like a lot of energy it takes a lot of energy it takes a lot of like stamina mm. you know if you're learning certain dance moves let's say and sometimes people could be like wow it's a lot like how do you mm. guys do it but I also it's great because when you tap into these cultures you learn how to let go and you learn how to move with your heart and we move with our heart because you know you could be told all these things, but it's always your emotion. It's the same thing when you have a child. Like you could practice your breathing all you want, but when that pain comes in, you're not doing the technique first. Mm -hmm. You're screaming for pain, you know? So I think that this black art is um, a beautiful expression to show like struggle, but beauty, and also not always being a victim in mm -hmm. the, the darkness we've experienced, but also to, to celebrate that we did not come from slavery, we were kings and queens, and the first metropolitan city was in Nigeria, mm -hmm. right? These are things they don't talk about, these are things we don't learn in school, so um, for to see people out here and all over the world like really embracing culture, it's beautiful, you know? And I know sometimes it's like that in between of like cultural appropriation and appreciation, but we all borrow from one another, you know, like I love Indian jewelry, mm. you know, um, I, and I love to mix it with my African head wraps mm. and that's me appreciating it. Or if I braid someone's hair and she's a white girl, you mm. know, there's a difference. You know, I've had some that after I braid their hair, they're like, the attitude changes. They're like, mm-hmm, girl, yeah, I hear you. Mm, do you? Yeah. And you're like, calm down. It's just a hairstyle. Relax. Be yourself. You know, so... Um, but then there's some, you know, I, that, but I do believe that it's how you carry yourself, you know, like there's a lot of people that I know that are white that go to Africa or mm -hmm. Jamaica and really learn the culture and then there's black people who get mad and shun that, but it's mm -hmm. like, why? Because, like, how could I argue with someone who lived in India for five years and could speak the language and knows, you know, so sometimes we have to, before our judgment, try to understand where that background of that person's coming from because whether they're white, Chinese, you know, it's like there's, there's Jamaican Chinese, you know, there's black Russians. So are you going to fight with them to tell them they're not that, of who they are? Yeah. So it's really important to, as we're learning about these cultures as we grow, is to not point the finger until we know, like, someone's background because... Um, I think sometimes we're so eager to be pro-black, mm -hmm. pro-this, that even some of the people who try to be pro-black who think they are, are realizing they're arguing for things that are not really empowering us. Like, mm. if you have an event, you're like, no white people allowed. It's not helping because how are they going to learn how to feel excluded, like how I'm excluded yeah. in a party when there's all white people. Like, they learn by experience. So if I block you, 
it's actually making you know like a confusion and it's also separating us instead of bringing us together yeah. you know so well, yeah it's exactly that and i was actually having a conversation with this indian woman yesterday and mm -hmm. saying how when i go to different places how i love to embrace the culture when i went to india i was always walking with the a bindi and a yeah. sari because i just feel it's i just feel yeah it's a way of honoring it and i know mm -hmm. that some people can take it the wrong way like bali is my soul's home and i will buy the whole kabaya and sarong and do all the temp the temple prayers because i feel connected to it i yeah. feel it makes sense to me and i feel it's a form of me paying respect to it and yes. even me being a uh, half south african i feel this love and passion for at mama africa for being the cradle of humanity and all of the deep medicinal wisdom that it has especially mm -hmm. through dance i feel like since i was a child my my parents always say it's like you were always dancing like everywhere mm -hmm. and i feel that's like the medicine and that's what we need to bring back because in africa there's dance rituals and ceremonies for so many things that mm -hmm. i i don't i'm not even aware of but i'm eager to learn because i feel yeah. that that's the medicine that the whole Western world needs to know. We need to embrace that. It's not just yeah. because we African or we Indian or we Indonesian. It's we all have these bits of wisdom from every culture and it's about mm -hmm. uniting it. Like Nelson Mandela used to say about Africa being a rainbow nation. Yes. It's mm -hmm. not about black or white. It's we are the entire rainbow. And yeah. it's time that we bring that unity together. And I feel that unity is through this ancient wisdom, medicine, the, of the singing, of the dancing, of yeah. the rituals. Yeah, like I did a Orisha's ayahuasca, um, thanks to my friend Indy who brought that here. And it was like end of January, beginning of Feb. And, you know, we're tapping into the nigerian like yoruba like orishas you know like oshun and yamaha and oshumare mm -hmm. and oshala and oya and oba and all these and it's like yeah i come there and there's white people who've been practicing it before me mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean i can't learn from them like the crew from brazil was from italy you know one was italian who lives in india you know mm -hmm. you know one was some were black some were chinese you know and it was just so beautiful and it was like that doesn't mean because I'm black that I know more than them. I actually could learn from them because they've been in that culture, you know? And of course now it's like I'm learning under them and gaining more knowledge and also tapping into those, those, um, those di uh, deities and, and gods, you mm -hmm. know? And it's, it's a beautiful exchange, you know? And, and, and I think it's good to honor it because we are never gonna be able to stop or choose which race comes anywhere mm. so even if i do a, a black afro class i'm gonna have probably sometimes more white people mm. so i have to be grateful for those who want to take my class who want to learn from me um and vice versa you know sometimes we as black people we talk but we don't show up mm. so it's like we could talk about yeah ain't nothing black for nobody well, what's going on and then it mm. comes and where are they they're flaking or they're somewhere else mm. so it's just we have to take accountability for our actions and how mm. you know yes blacks been through stuff but also we have we have the power to change and we have the power to do different and i'm not going to victimize myself every day even though i have those things that come up but mm. it's bigger than that like i don't want to be sad every day or thinking mm. about how i was treated i want to overcome that and empower myself and learning about these you know like for me to learn about ancient egypt um kemet to like learning the orishas which is the other african side and it's just like it's bringing balance in my life you know and i still really like you know buddhism and i really mm -hmm. like you know the indian culture so they're all spiritual and they all they all have similar stories same thing like how yeah, I'm not religious, but how there's 12 disciples, it's actually the 12 horoscope, right? Mm. So there's always a 12 something, mm. you know, and um, that higher self in like, you know, different cultures, you know, tap into their chakras and their third eye and their heart space, mm. you know, so 
it's um, really important that we remember spirituality is your soul. It's not the color of your skin. If we all close our eyes, if we all close our eyes, like if we're all in the black. I always say, if we're, when the lights turn off, we're all black. You know, our souls. When we, you know, like when we close our eyes, it's darkness, you know. When you look at the stars, the stars shine because of the blackness of the sky. And the diamonds come from the darkness of the earth. Mm -hmm. So everything yeah. is balanced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I feel this so, it's so powerful, right? It's this feeling of Ubuntu. That's why my company is called okay. Ubuntu Essence. Because it means I am because you are. It's the essence of being human. It's what unites us all as humans, right? Mm -hmm. It's just in this interconnectedness feeling that we have and it's not about judging you know uh, race gender uh, yeah. yeah sexual orientation it's just we just here yeah, to be human imperfect humans and to enjoy life and to to heal whatever we need to heal and to fulfill our mission yes that's it you know like um, the Risha that I've been connecting with is Oshimare he's half man half woman half the year and he represents rainbow, which I realize that's probably where they get for the gay village, why they have the rainbow. But they probably don't talk about that connection, but that's what it's from. He's, you know, so he's a man, he's like, you know, with the rainbow falling, or he could be a woman. And I think a lot of us can relate to that because mm -hmm. a lot of us as women, we're very, like, we grew up tomboys, you know, mm -hmm. like I grew up with two brothers, close to my dad, I'm boxing, you know. Mm -hmm crumping, whatever, like everything a guy did, I wanted mm. to do. And I was so much in my masculine and now we're into our feminine and now the men are tapping into their feminine. And so, you know, and then you, you know, whether we have gays or trans or whatever, it's just like, at the end of the day, I, when I talk to them, it's their soul that I'm talking to. Mm. Like, you're a great person. And then as soon as I know your sexual orientation or whatever you like or whatever, mm. then it changes. Why does it change? Like, if I had a great conversation, like, oh, he's so funny. And then he's like, oh, yeah, you know, he's gay. Oh. Yeah. Um, it and it's really like, okay, but you just had a great time. So <laughs> for me, it's like, yeah. you know, you hold yourself back. Well, every time you limit, put limitations on others, you put limitation on your own life. So you block your own blessings by blocking others. So I always, you know, tell people, like, we, mm. we have to look into these deities and not look at them as just look up to them like gods. It's like they are in us. Yeah. So when, when, like, example, like all of us, I know a lot of women, we have sacral chakra blockage, mm. solar plexus, you know. Mm. We have a lot of male trauma that I didn't even know I had. I'm like, I feel fine. I don't feel like mm. I'm sad about anything. But it's men in my body that I haven't released. So I remember, like, in the ceremony, like, I was just like, can he represent serpent, mm. serpent energy, kundalini. And every time I was down, and also in this ayahuasca, you dance in, mm. in um, the Brazilian wow. tradition. You don't sit. I need to go so you have to dance to it. <laughs> and so here I am, like, on the ground bowing, but all I can do is move my spine. And I'm whining, and I know people looking at me like, she's getting sexual. Like, she's like, <laughs> but it was just like, that's what I did all night. And I, ch like, I got the energy out of my body. Like, there's still some there, but a lot of the, the tenseness has released because I've channeled this 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 being you know mm -hmm. so i feel like um we have to change the way we interpret and look at them and mm -hmm. know that yes you're an ancestor but mm -hmm. you're also within me mm -hmm. and so that's the medicine they each come with something you know and that's the medicine we need to remember within us, right? Our ancestral wisdom that's in our DNA. It's yeah. really about that. It's how can we tap into this divine love, to this divinity that lies within our skin and bones. And yeah. I have this deep remembrance. I even posted something and, and a black girl commented, girl, like rolling her eyes, being like, you like delusional. Because I commented something about how I remember like my many black lives as a slave, as a shaman, and I'll literally cry and feel it all over my body. The pain, I feel like literal the pain because I, I remember. Oh. And then I also remember all of the wisdom that comes with it. 
you know, all mm -hmm. of the, I, I'm starting to remember before it was only the pain that I remembered because I needed to heal. And now it's like all of this deep remembrance of my African ancestors that I believe we all have, that we all can tap into. Mm -hmm. But I feel because I was born in, with my parents are both South African, even though they're white, I feel I would love to know like back my lineage. But I know for sure mm -hmm. in, in my bloodline, in my uh, ancestral um, lineage that, yeah, I have... I have a lot of that and it's just it's mm -hmm. so deep but this is the thing I always tell people like you the white the other colors come from blackness so even white people are black Indians are black but it's weird we don't we have to say people are Asian mm. and people are this like like if you look at Filipinos they're like black and Mexican mm. they're like black and Spanish they look mm. Mexican but mm. they have this black <laughs> energy Cause they are, yeah. like Indians are melanated, yeah. but they don't get treated like blacks. Yeah. But you're black, you're melanated. Yeah. So someone who's South African, whether it's apartheid, mm -hmm. whether you lived on mm -hmm. the white side and you speak Afrikaans, mm -hmm. like there's a lot that friends that are South African that also like maybe was caught up in it that mm -hmm. they don't want to. Like they're like, I love the black people. Yeah. Like, or you know, so it's like, like we can't take that away from you. The fact that you're South African, mm -hmm. you're African. Mm -hmm. Like, it's weird for people to see. Same thing like my friend, he's a black Russian. His dad's from Nigeria, but they grew up in Russia. And he, mm -hmm. when he's, that's his first language. And people are just yeah. like, but why? But it's like, but you can't deny it. Like, he grew I up know. there. So, you know, that's, then that's when you're dealing with ignorance, when people just see it and it's like, and so and that's the thing when I say like, woke and conscious. There's black mm -hmm. people who are woke. There's kept black people just waking up. So, when I get people telling me don't do white people's hair and stuff like that and they're writing me these DMs, it's just like they're already not even there in terms of the consciousness that I know. So yeah. I'm just kind of like baby steps, you know, yeah. but the more we keep doing that, you know, the more it's actually mirroring Coming back to back. us. Yeah. Yeah, I always used to feel so sad when people used to be like, but you're South African, but you're white. You know, it's like, yeah. dude, it's just like, I'm so proud of my roots. I feel like, and I want to honor it more and more. I feel like this deep, deep calling. Yeah. And then I have this feeling of like, oh, but maybe I won't be able to do what I want to do because then the black people will say that, oh, but you know, you're white and you, you know, mm -hmm. it's like not your place. I have that that fear inside me, and that's why we need to tap into our higher self so that we're we don't care and we're un, we don't we're untouchable. Like we know now with this pandemic and the three D, four D, five D, the five D consciousness that we cannot live in a world where we care what people think. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, I was at an, like I've been at these events where like I've been having these white women coming and taking up space at events and really just pushing. And it made me very uncomfortable because one woman, I had to displace her with my hands and not mad, but because she tripped or made it look dramatic, mm. then it was like, I'm the angry black girl that's got mm. an attitude. And it was the way we came out about, it's the energy behind it, but it was like, whether I moved her, pushed her, punched her, whatever, everyone created what they wanted in their head. Mm. I can't change that. I know I'm a good person and I could have done a better decision. Maybe I shouldn't have even done that. But this is my truth, you know? It's like whether I do something that people are going to go <gasps> or not, mm. they're going to make their decision. Like when I walk in the door and people are like, she's a bitch. There's some that are like, oh my God, her energy, she's so sincere. Yeah. She's really nice. Mm. So it's like with any territory, you know, any celebrity, anybody, it's like not everyone likes you. And when you sit with that, and you have to just keep reminding yourself that. Mm. And these deities help me because now I'm like, I'm in my godlyhood. So <laughs> if you think I'm this, then I'm that because you're that because you called it to me. So that's on you. Oh my God, that's exactly, <laughs> I'm just... Everything we're touching, it's like these pings that I've been getting. And it's like, wow, it's really not about us 
pleasing anyone because not ev we're not made for everyone and we can't connect. We can mm -hmm. recognize each other's humanity, but we can also recognize, okay, we're just, just not in the same page and that, that just, that's okay. That's it. And knowing that we have that love and that power from the divine is just amazing. So coming mm -hmm. with this topic, I want you to explain a bit more about what you do with the storytelling in the body and uh, tapping into this divinity in these deities. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. so um, this has been a long time coming because with being such an external being, um, dancing on stage and festivals and stuff, um, down to working for Netflix before I left my life to come here. Mm -hmm. And um, I found my higher purpose, and I realized that, like, this Egyptian, from a kid, I was into Egyptian and geishas. I didn't even know geishas were prostitutes or whatever, but I just was like, they look beautiful and royal. Um, I had this attraction, and, and I feel like, so now with this storytelling, like, as I've been down to the man that I met that makes my, my jewelry, um, to the man that brought me to him, like all the synchronicities in my life that brought me to, to this. Um, and then to, so it's, it's just so much, I don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. But the storytelling is really about unlearning and relearning first the history that we're taught in schools because I was never taught other, anything other than I was a slave. Mm -hmm. So when I learned, when I watched Hidden Colors documentary and it tells you, shows you like, the first ninja was black, you know, like Beethoven was black, you know, you, you know, Metropolitan in Nigeria, like all these, these rich history of us. I realized that it was, it, it empowered me. Like the next day I was a different person, you know? So this class that I've been doing is how can we learn about these deities Hathor, which is Het Heru, learning the Greek term and what's the African term, you know. And sorry, can you just explain, just because we're thinking about Egypt and we, not many people know the correlation with Africa, so just before, mm -hmm. can you just explain that? Yes, yeah, so Egypt is a Greek term. Um, although I think it's a nice name, the actual name is Kemet, and Kemet means the land of black faces. So. This is a place that knew who they were and they knew we would forget, so they wanted us to Ra member. Ra is the sun. She's on her Thor's head, right? So we had to remember. So no matter how much they said, yeah, we've been conquered by the Arabs and you know, we were always depicted white in movies, but on those walls, you cannot, you cannot, the proof was in there and they knew that that would happen then and we're behind we don't even know how they made these pyramids so to know that when i went came in on my 33rd birthday on my numerology my god year i'm september 3rd on the ninth month so on the ninth month on the third day i turned 33 in a place with a pyramid that is trinity i went to for three weeks stayed in three cities went to the pyramid three times every city i was with three men it was crazy like I, I don't even know. It was just, that was, you know, and to go there and be, go into these temples, like um, in Luxor, like the Valley of the Kings, like there's like over 25 and it looks like regular mountains, like the Grand Canyon. And mind you, there are hieroglyphics in the Grand Canyon also, and there are pyramids. But when you go, it looks normal and you go in there, it's like a church. It's like high in the hieroglyphics to the top, 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 and you see them dark, dark, all different shades. And I'm like, you know, it could be un uncomfortable for white people learning it, but it's really about the soul because mm. spirituality is the soul and it's the spirit. Mm. So I really want to remind people when you're coming in to this, you are going to be empowered. And these are your ancestors too, in its own way. And so we can't shy away it's, it's, I always would tell people, I had to go to school and be told the same thing over and over. You get one class and you're told something and you're uncomfortable mm -hmm. for one class. So imagine your whole life. So this is my whole life having to learn that other people were stronger than me, mm -hmm. you know? And this class is not to say I'm superior, it's to say 
that were great, period. Mm. They're just great, great pyramid, yes. you know? So we're great period in the great pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Wow. So I think, you know, a lot of people have been feeling like, oh, like the ISIS, you know, they've been tapping into ISIS, mm. which is Aset. That is the, ISIS is the Greek term, and Aset is the, the African term. Mm. Osiris is actually Asar, you know? Het Heru is Hathar, like that's the Greek term. So it's also teaching that, you know, mm -hmm. teaching to know the difference um, and to learn about them. I use my own personal experience with the, who I wanted, who I was and who I wanted to become. I was Het Heru. She's also in the Yoruba Orisha, she's Oshun. They both represent fertility, creation, joy. Yes, yeah, so Oshun and Het and Het Haru are pretty much the same from the, you know, from Nigeria to to Kemet, and they represent joy, creation, fertility, um, beauty, pleasure. You know, so um, when you learn about this. Like, I always was Het Haru, but never, I kept saying, I'm a odd, I'm a odd. Like, she's law, justice, order, but mm. I didn't have that much order. Mm. I didn't know law. I kept running into law, doing legal things, just traveling legally, and I would get stopped and blocked. Mm. And it was like, it had to happen to me for me to, it had to ruin my life and get in my way for me to learn about it. So I had to learn about law during the pandemic, how to, if I didn't want to take, you know, a hotel quarantine, mm -hmm. I had to use my rights mm -hmm. to maneuver. It's like a game of chess. Mm -hmm. If you know the rules, you can maneuver, you mm -hmm. can break them. But if you don't know, you don't. So here, this is what I want to explain to people is, you might think you're one being, but you actually are, be you're becoming one, but you're mm -hmm. already something else. Mm -hmm. So this is what I, I show. And then with the movement, you know, hieroglyphics is also a sign language. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, receiving, giving, serpent energy, mm -hmm. wisdom. I bring wisdom onto you, mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. in the class, you know, it's like ev I give pictures and people can do an intro of four moves. Like, hi, I'm Leah Ma'at, mm -hmm. you know? And you could be like, hi, I'm Sasha, mm -hmm. you know? And then, we come together as a group and then we can create our own connection. And so there's also comedic yoga, which is twisting your body so it looks like you're flat, like, like on a wall, like you become hieroglyphics. Mm. So eventually part two would be we do them on walls and we are flipping and our body is twisted because that's also an energy of vibration of you being able to hold your body twisted instead of being the same way how you get flexibility with your downward dog. Imagine sitting like ma'at, where your hands are open here, but your body's, your legs are over there. That twist is a vibration in your body. So you, that embodiment, and then you being like, oh, I, I'm a, I thought I was ma'at, but first I'm aset, and I'm becoming ma'at. Or, you know, I have, you know, you know, I have Sekhmet, you know, I have the fierce energy inside of me, you know? And so that's what we know, to, for people to find that and embody it in, and I even give them jewelry, I give it to you to empower you, and then I remove it while you're moving, and I notice people change. When I give them a, a collar or I give them a crown, they're like, mm -mm, and like yeah. I say, do it, close your eyes. And then when I take it off, they're like, Mm. So now it's to remember, okay, you could wear this armor without the armor. I love jewelry, but I know I have it when I don't have it. So this is what we're tapping into is wow. you can you could be equipped, you know, without having all the, yeah. the accessories. But although Head Heart Teru and Oshun are about vanity and beauty and things, because I'm a stylist, I like yeah. to make people look yeah. great. But I also could look great naked. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> we all could look great naked and yeah. being our bare, true selves. Yeah, that's the most vulnerable and authentic, right? 
yeah, yeah. amazing so what would you tell uh, the people that are watching us uh, if they are um, interested in, in starting this relationship with the divine or connecting with this divine what what would be like your a basic simple recommendation to start with like if they want to learn learn um, or embody like a practice or a ritual well I would say you could start with um, I follow there's Baba Haru he also is the jeweler he makes the onks for Erica Badu mm -hmm. His ex-wife is Queen Afua, who also does feminine um, mm -hmm. empowerment, too. And there's Mufundishi. So I always say, look into, just looking into Kemet. Just look at Kemet or Kemetic Yoga. Start looking at those positions of yoga and the, the other deity names and start seeing what attributes you tick off that mm -hmm. you feel are similar, you know, and start from there and learn a little bit about all of them, and then you could even help your friends be like, hey, I think you are Pata, mm -hmm. you know, and I think you are this, you know. Um, and I'm also doing a class at Sana on the 20th, so I'm gonna be doing a two-hour class, and I'll be providing food, and we're gonna be able mm -hmm. to, this is my first time, I've been, it's probably like two, three years coming for me to finally, like, yeah. I've done one at a retreat in December, um, so that was the first official mm -hmm. time I've done it. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to share yes, and see, wow. I'm, I wanna see go the transformation. Sure. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, so just to end this, I would like you to just uh, say in a simple phrase or word, what, like, what does this divine relationship give, add on to your life? And what would your life be without your relationship to, this, to the divine? Uh, learning about the divine, I think if I didn't have it, I would be more insecure about my movements, maybe not as confident or second-guessing a lot of myself, mm -hmm. whereas now, even if I'm not sure, I walk in the knowing. And I also, I do a five-second rule, so every time I talk myself out of something, I do it. If I'm trying to say, no, I go five, four, three, two, one. Okay, yeah. and I get into it. Yeah. So, I feel like knowing about these deities, I've learned how to, yeah, not let other outside realms detach me. Because when you are God, no one can shake you. But I've been shaken. Mm -hmm. I I have my weak moments. But it's about how I could not be guilty and sit in guilt. Yeah. But how I can be like that happened, and I'm moving on. Transmute the energy. Yeah. So now I look at life and I, in a loving heart way where it's like I'm detached, whereas a Virgo, I'm so holding on and mm -hmm. thinking and thinking. And now I don't think as much. I'm always, I'm way more in the present. I'm more calm. So um, if I ever make a mistake, I don't dwell on it and I move forward. Mm -hmm. So it makes me lighter. And, you know, the judgment, yes. right, with the way your heart is light as a feather. Yeah. This is it. Like the more we use our voice, the more we express our truth, mm -hmm. the lighter you feel. You know, I expressed this week a lot to friends and family about how I felt, how you could show up for me. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, why are God tell you how to show up? Why you just don't know how to just <laughs> initiate? It's annoying. But once I get it out, then I let them know. It's like, yeah, maybe sometimes delivery is not the best or whatever, but the message is there, mm -hmm. and I feel lighter. And that's all I want. Beautiful. You know, I think everyone should focus mm -hmm. on staying light and right. <laughs> Ooh, yes, baby. <laughs> Amazing. So how can people find you? So you can find me on Facebook and Instagram under Leah Maat, M-A-A-T, McFly, mm -hmm. M-C-F-L-Y. And um, yeah, those are the two main platforms I use. I'm not on TikTok or anything. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. <laughs> and cool. uh, anything else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just Amazing. shoot me a message. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was like so powerful. So yeah, powerful. So you. full of juiciness and yeah, magic and healing. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> My loves, I hope that you enjoyed and learned so much from this chat as much as I did. It brings me really so much healing having these conversations and bringing all of this ancient wisdom back. This is what we need. This is what we're here for. We're here to unite. We're here to thrive together. Ubuntu, I am because you are. I love you. See you in the next episode. <laughs>